Hello folks, Prasad Domla here and in this video I'll briefly explain what lambda layers are and uh, how to use them in your uh, lambda functions. So let's get started. Imagine you have a bunch of uh, lambda functions written in uh, Python or any other uh, runtime which use same set of uh, you know third party uh, Python modules. So the only way to achieve this is to include all your third party uh, libraries in your um, uh, deployment package. So we are basically duplicating the libraries and the deployment package size will be significantly large compared to your uh, you know, function code. To address this problem, AWS introduced Lambda layers in reInvent 2018. So what is a Lambda layer? A Lambda layer is a zip package with your uh, custom modules, functions, you know, binary files and other data, which can be uploaded as a zip archive and uh, published as a Lambda layer. This Lambda layer can be referenced in multiple lambda functions as we normally do as if uh, the third party modules are within the deployment uh, package. This will significantly reduce the lambda function deployment package and we can have smaller and uh, you know cleaner lambda functions. We can also secure these lambda layers using IAM policies and make them available to uh, you know specific accounts or uh, organizations. As it is the case with all AWS services, lambda layers also have some uh, limitations. So you can have up to five Lambda layers per Lambda function and the unzipped layer uh, size should not exceed uh, 250 uh, MB. Once you add a layer to your Lambda function, the package will be extracted into slash OPT of your uh, Lambda runtime. So our Lambda functions uh, look at different folders based on the language you are writing your function in. So for Node.js, it looks in uh, Node.js slash Node modules and also Node.js slash Node 8 uh, slash Node modules. For Python, it looks in uh, Python folder, or if you're using uh, 3.7, it looks in um, Python lib uh, slash Python 3.7 slash uh, site packages. For Java, it is uh, Java slash uh, lib, and for Ruby, it is uh, Ruby slash uh, gem slash 2.5.0, or uh, Ruby slash uh, lib. So it also looks in bin and lib directories for any uh, you know binary or uh, library files. In today's demo, we'll be exploring uh, three use cases. First, uh, let's say we have a Lambda function which we wanted to use in multiple Lambda functions. So we'll write this function once inside a layer and use it in multiple Lambda functions. The second use case is uh, we'll include third party modules inside a layer and use them in multiple Lambda functions. And third, we'll add some static data in JSON format, which we again use in uh, multiple Lambda functions. So these are some simple use cases, but you can apply the same process for your um, real world uh, you know, use cases or scenarios. I'll be using SAM CLI to author test and deploy my Lambda functions and layers. So you can watch my video on SAM uh, to uh, know how to do it. I'll leave the link in the description. I have my uh, SAM CLI already uh, installed. I can check my version, SAM hyphen uh, hyphen version. So I'm currently on uh, 0 0.10 version of SAM. So I'll just use um, a SAM init command and I'll use uh, runtime as um, Python 3.7. You can use any runtime you want, like Node.js or Ruby. And I'll call my uh, SAM application as uh, say layers demo. So this will create a folder called uh, layers demo. I'll open that folder in my uh, Visual Studio code. So this is the default folder structure SAM CLI uh, creates for us. First, let me create a folder here to define my layers. I'll just uh, call it as uh, Lambda layers. And in here, I'll create a folder structure for Python 3.7 as we uh, discussed earlier which is like uh, python slash lib slash python 3.7 slash site packages. So I'll just open my uh, terminal here. I'll just do uh, mkdr hyphen p lambda layers and then python lib python 3.7 and then site packages. So this is the folder Lambda runtime will look for third party uh, modules if you're using Python uh, 
If you're using Python 3.6, the version will change to uh, Python 3.6 here. So I'll just create this uh, directory structure. So I have my directory structure created here. Here I'll create a deserialize uh, function, which basically uh, you know deserializes um, date time values uh, from uh, Boto3 uh, responses. So I generally use this function in almost all Lambda functions where I use uh, Boto3. So now I wanted to add it to a layer instead of putting this function in every uh, Lambda function. I'll call this as uh, deserialize uh, date.py and I'm creating it under my uh, site packages. And I'll just copy and paste the code from my uh, Git repo. Again, I'll leave all this code I'm using in this uh, demo in my uh, Git repo. You can copy the code from there. So this is the code I'll be using uh, for my uh, deserialize uh, hyphen date dot py function or else I'll just uh, call this um, deserialize dot uh, py. So here I'm just printing a message uh, calling deserialize function from lambda layer and then I'm just converting the date time object to a string object and returning that uh, object. So nothing complicated here. So I'll be importing this Python uh, file in multiple lambda functions. Next, uh, let's install object path, which is a third party Python module. I'll use pip to install and I'll be installing this uh, third party module inside my site packages directory. So I'll say pip install and then object path. And I'll provide a target argument here, which will be my uh, lambda layers and then python lib python 3.7 slash um, site packages. So this will install my uh, third party module inside the site packages uh, directory here. Finally, let's add a data folder inside Lambda layers. I'll just uh, call the folder as uh, data. And inside data, I'll create a new file called as uh, AWS regions.json, which basically contains the information about all AWS regions and uh, availability zones. And I'll be using this JSON file in multiple Lambda functions. So I'll just copy this JSON file from my Git repo again. So this is my uh, JSON file, which contains information of uh, all the regions and its uh, availability zones. Now we have all the data and modules required for our Lambda layer with all the three use cases we discussed, a custom function for uh, deserializing, a third party module called object path and a data folder with our AWS regions.json uh, file. Now let me zip the contents of my uh, Lambda layers directory. So I'll use uh, a zip hyphen R and I'll call my zip file as um, my Lambda layer.zip and then I'll zip data and uh, Python directories. So this will create my uh, Lambda layer.zip file, which I'll be using as a source of my uh, Lambda layer. Now I'll define two Lambda functions for this uh, demo. First one will be uh, to use our uh, deserialize uh, function and the second one to use our AWS uh, regions.json uh, file and object path uh, module. First, let me create folders for my uh, Lambda functions. So I'll just call them as uh, deserialize demo. And the second one, I'll call it as um, object path data demo. And I'll uh, create uh, main.py files inside these um, directories. So I'll just say deserialize demo main.py and uh, object path demo main.py. So we have our um, folders created for two uh, Lambda functions and a main.py file created. I'll just copy the code for these two uh, main.py files. Again, from my uh, Git repo. You can basically clone this Git repo and uh, test your uh, Lambda layers. So this is the code for my uh, deserialize uh, function. So here I'm importing deserialize uh, function from my uh, Lambda layers. So we don't have uh, deserialize uh, inside this folder. So this is coming from Lambda layer. So here I'm defining uh, uh, EC2 client. I'm just uh, executing uh, describe instances and I'm just passing that response uh, through this uh, deserialization function, which uh, converts the date into a string. 
So that's it in this function. Next, let me uh, copy the code for my object path uh, data demo lambda function. So this is the code I'm using for this uh, function. So as you can see, I'm importing object path here, but this is again coming from uh, lambda layer. And then uh, I'm reading this uh, AWS regions.json file from our lambda layer. Again, remember our uh, lambda layer will be uh, extracted into slash opt and the path would be uh, relative to a slash opt that is uh, slash data slash AWS regions.json. The same way we have uh, here. So I'm just creating an object here, which is called regions object. And I'm using object path to just extract the data for uh, Sydney region. And I'm just returning that uh, Sydney object here. So here in this function, I'm basically using uh, the data file, which is AWS regions.json and uh, the object path module from my uh, Lambda layers. So I'll save both the functions here. And then I'll define my functions in um, my template.yaml file here. So I'll just copy the code again uh, from my Git repo. So this is the SAM template I'm using for this uh, demo. So I have my uh, global section where I have defined the timeout as uh, 60 seconds. And under resources, I have my two Lambda functions defined here. So the type would be uh, AWS serverless function. And then I have given the function name, description, and my uh, Lambda role. And I have provided the code URI for both these functions. The first one would be uh, deserialize hyphen demo. And the second one would be object path hyphen data hyphen demo. And then the handlers would be same for both the functions, which is main.handler. And the runtime would be same, which is Python 3.7. And uh, I have defined my uh, layers here, which will be a reference to another resource here. So I have defined my layer here under resources, which is called uh, my Lambda layer. So the type of this resource would be AWS serverless uh, layer version. So I'm defining the layer name as my Lambda layer and some description. And the content URI would be the path uh, to my uh, zip folder, which we uh, created inside our uh, Lambda layers directory, which is my Lambda layer dot zip. And then uh, we can provide a uh, compatible runtimes. So this particular layer would be compatible with both um, 3.6 and 3.7 versions of Python. And then you can provide some license info and the retention policy, I'm keeping it as uh, retain. So this is uh, to tell CloudFormation to retain older versions of uh, the layers, just in case if you want to use uh, older versions in your Lambda functions. If you set it to delete, every time we deploy this um, uh, layer, CloudFormation will delete the old uh, Lambda layer and creates a new version of that particular layer. Under outputs, I added a reference to our uh, Lambda layer, which basically uh, spits out the ARN of your uh, Lambda layer. So you can use this ARN for any Lambda functions you create in future instead of the reference. Again, this template code is uh, available on my uh, Git repo. You can copy it from there. So now we have defined all the resources required in our uh, template. Let's package and deploy this SAM application to AWS. So I'm not explaining SAM workflow in this video. I have a separate video for that. So the link will be in the description if you want to watch it. So let me uh, package this application using SAM package command is SAM package and then uh, hyphen hyphen template file which will be template.yaml and then my output file which is output template file I'll just call it as uh, deploy.yaml and then you need to provide uh, s3 bucket to uh, store your um, packages so that is s3 bucket I have my S3 bucket already created. I'll just provide that bucket name here. So this will package the application and upload it to uh, S3. I will also create a deploy.yaml file, which we'll be using to deploy this um, resources to uh, AWS. So now I can use um, sam deploy command, which is sam deploy, and then hyphen hyphen template file. In this case, the template file would be uh, deploy.yaml. And then I'll create a new stack for these uh, Lambda functions and layers. So I'll just provide a stack name here. So I'll just call it as uh, layers demo stack. So this will deploy my uh, Lambda layer to Lambda functions onto my AWS account. So our stack deployment is um, uh, successfully completed here.
I'm on my CloudFormation console, and as you can see, our layers, our demo stack is uh, created here. And if I go to resources, you can see uh, both our Lambda functions, our uh, deserialized uh, demo and object path data demo Lambda functions created. And we have our uh, Lambda layer created here as well. Now let's go to Lambda console. As you can see, we have uh, both our Lambda functions created here. So if you click on layers here, you can see my uh, Lambda layer uh, created. So let's test our deserialized uh, demo function. You can see that Lambda layer is um, attached here to the function. So if you click on the layers here, you can see the layer details here, which is uh, my Lambda layer. And this is the ARN of uh, the layer. So let me uh, quickly create a test event. I'll just call it as test. And then hit test here. So if you see the log here, you can find the message from our uh, deserialize uh, function which is uh, calling deserialize function from our Lambda layer, which we have uh, mentioned in our uh, deserialize.py uh, script, which means that this Lambda function is able to talk to our um, deserialize.py uh, file within our Lambda layers. Now let's have a look at our second function, which is object path data demo. And then again, you can see the layer attached here, which is my Lambda layer. And then uh, let me create a test event here as well. And then hit test. As you can see, we got our uh, Sydney uh, specific uh, object here, as mentioned in our uh, Lambda function. So the function is basically reading the JSON file from the Lambda layer and using object path module again from Lambda layer to uh, extract Sydney specific object from the JSON file. So that is how you can use Lambda layers for various common functions or data or you know third party modules you wanted to uh, share across multiple Lambda functions without actually including them in your uh, Lambda deployment package and in turn keeping your uh, deployment package you know smaller and uh, cleaner. So I use SAMP for this uh, demo but you can use the same process to create layers and functions on the console as well. So you can go to uh, Lambda console here and then click on layers and then you can create a layer directly from the console here provide your uh, layer name description and then you can upload the zip file the same zip file we created here which is my lambda layer dot uh, zip file and you can select the run times that is compatible run times and then create your layer directly from here if you are not using uh, sam and you can create the lambda functions the same way you do uh, from the console when you create Lambda functions from the console, you need to specify a layer for your uh, Lambda function. Let me create a dummy uh, function here. So I'll just call it as uh, test. And then I'll provide runtime as uh, Python 3.7. Just provide some role here. And then create function. And then select layers from here. And then uh, scroll down and click on uh, add layer. And here you will see all your uh, layers which you have uh, created and uh, you have one AWS uh, provided layer, you can use that or this is our um, custom uh, layer which we uh, created so you can select that and then you can select the version of that layer which you want to uh, use or if you want to use any um, uh, third party uh, layers from, from a different account you can provide their uh, ARN here and they should have provided permission to use that layer within this particular AWS account and you can add the layer to your uh, Lambda function. I recommend to use SAM CLI to author, manage, and uh, test your Lambda functions uh, locally. You know, you can watch my uh, video on how to use SAM CLI for local Lambda development. I'll leave the link in the description. So that's it for this uh, video. I hope you found it uh, useful. Please uh, hit that like button if you did, and subscribe to my uh, channel for more videos. Have a good day and see you in the next one.